Guys, we've got news! Big news! Yes, that is right. Out of nowhere, Frontier hasn't just dropped a new DLC with new dinosaurs. No, no, no. They've dropped a DLC with campaign, with new map, with new skins, with new dinosaurs. It's so, in today's video, we're going to go over all of the new things um, to expect from this DLC. And with the new DLC, of course, we get a free update for all platforms, giving us new things to expect and, you know, just changes of life. Good things. Always good things all around. So, before we get into all of that, let's watch the trailer they released. Yes, here we go. Mmm, in-game footage. An all-new story. Mmm, very cool. Wait, what? Three new islands? How did I miss that? New species? I mean, yeah, I saw that. Yes, over after. Gorgeous. Three new islands. What do they mean, islands? I thought we were on the mainland. What's going on? <laughs> so we'll probably find out more about those islands when we get into the descriptions about these. But first, I want to cover what we've been waiting for for the longest time. What they teased before any of this. And that was, of course, the Atrociraptors that you can see right there. They're gorgeous. Arguably even more dangerous than its Velociraptor cousins. Atrociraptor has a bulkier body and a boxier snout. Not to worry, though. We'll be providing you with all four of the Atrociraptors. Iconic Jurassic World skins, Ghost, Red, Tiger, and Panthera. Yeah. Uh, if you didn't know by watching Dominion, and this is your first, you know, foray into the Atrociraptors. They had names. What? So this was Colin Trevorrow's way of going, hey, remember like the Raptor Squad? We're doing it again. Except for this time, no backstory. And you don't even hear the names. <laughs> so you have, I think Ghost is the, the white one. Tiger, I think is the far left one. And Panthera and Red, I've got to be honest, they kind of look all the same. But I'm not expecting them to have unique animations per se. I mean, the Atrociraptor animation will be unique, but I don't think Ghost's animation is going to be different to Red's. You know, a bit like how we got, you know, Echo, Delta, Charlie, and Blue. Um, none of them had unique animations with anything. It was just that, you know, they looked a bit different. However, if the Atrociraptors don't have unique animations at all, and they're just Velociraptor, uh, I feel like they missed out on a trick there, especially when they're, you know, saying that they're completely iconic to the Jurassic World Dominion. Uh, franchise, but not only are we getting the Atrociraptors. Oh, well, that there you go. There's a nicer picture of uh, I was gonna say blue, <laughs> ghost, or white. Uh, you got the Lystrosaurus, yes, one of the dinosaurs that was cut. It had an, a, a really cool scene in the extended um, edition of Jurassic World Dominion where it bit off the head of the Oviraptor. Lystrosaurus, this short squat herbivore is notable for its tusks and horned beak, which are used to bite off bits of vegetation. With powerful four limbs and an unusual shaped skull, we're sure your guests will be thrilled to see them in the packs. Lystrosaurus will also have a 2022 skin based on Jurassic World Dominion. Oh, so that's interesting. I'm assuming the Atrociraptors will only get the, you know, the regular skins or, you know, the iconic skins from 2020 uh, too. But it looks like Lystrosaurus is going to have its own skin as well as uh, regular skins. A bit like you had the Paraptor, you had the you know, 2022 skin. I've seen a lot of people be like, what about Microceratops, you know? Uh, that thing that uh, Colin was on about. I think that was his favorite dinosaur and he really wanted to get that into Dominion. And I think it was only in the flashback with, um, I can't even remember her name. Good God, the clone. Uh, where she's sort of teasing like, hey, 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 stick the finger in. <laughs> but apart from that, I don't think we're going to see Microceratops. What's good about this though, is that it's a new animation. Like, it's a bit like Dimetrodon. It's smaller, and mods are going to enjoy having a different rig to play around with, and we're going to see maybe some other uh, prehistoric mammals come into it using that rig. So I'm really excited for Lystrosaurus. Uh, and then this was one I was not expecting, the Moros Intrepidus. Again, all of these dinosaurs that came to Jurassic World Alive yonks ago, it feels. But nice to see this in here uh, with its, like, its plumage and looking really detailed. One of the smallest Tyrannosaurids uh, to have ever existed, the Morris Intrepidus is only a fraction of the size of its famous relative, the T-Rex. Despite its short stature, it is known to be quick and nimble hunter. With an incredible 2022 skin, uh, Morris Intrepidus is a formidable addition to any park. So I'm not saying on top, but it's saying it has with its incredible 2022 skin. So I'm not expecting it to have a regular skin. Maybe this is... I mean, the thing is, when it comes to dinosaurs in Jurassic World Evolution, it's very rare. They only 
have one skin. In fact, I don't think any dinosaur has one skin. Because this is a Tyrannosaurid, you see this picking the teeth of Giga. So in a way, that's sort of more sh more like shade being put onto T-Rex. Like, hey, look, even your ancestors are praising the Giga. Look at this, clean his teeth. <laughs> but anyway, ignoring all that, uh, we've got the Overraptor, the Egg Hunter. Uh, don't let Overraptor's size fool you. They possess an incredibly powerful jaw for their size. Well, Mr. Saw begs to differ. Originally a thought to steal other species' of eggs. Yeah, there we go. Hence the name Overraptor, which means egg thief. It's since been understood to be an omnivore with an, a distinctive head crest and feathers. Overraptor has an incredibly unique looking game. You'll also be able to enjoy a 2022 skin. So we, I think we're being shown the 2022 skin, which was in the flashback to um, the, you know, how Rexy died, but I don't think it was shown in the movie. Maybe it was shown in the extended edition, um, but it also, it had a death scene in the extended edition where its head got bit off. <laughs> it looks like it's going to have its own unique animations. A lot of these dinosaurs, when it comes to a pack, the might, there was usually like one dinosaur that would have unique animation and the rest would sort of be something that would fit in like the Woohoosaurus for the Stegosaur or something like that. But it looks like Overaptor, Atrociraptor, Lystrosaurus, uh, Moro and Trepidus, they're all unique. So when this DLC drops, not only are we getting campaign species and other skins, we're getting so much out of this. So I'm, I'm expecting it to maybe be a hefty price tag for a DLC. And then we get onto the other dinosaurs that have skins. Finally, Allosaurus has a skin that is reflective of its Battle of Big Rock and also uh, the one in Jurassic World Dominion, which is very nice to see. Not only do we have that, I mean, I was like, oh, wait a minute, we already have Dimorphodon. But this is the Dimorphodon where it was like, it had a little hat or a little head thing on it. Um, but it's got like fur, its wings are different colors. But basically the main model is the same. It just has some extra fur and a few color changes here and there. This was supposed to be the, um, it was supposed to be Toro from Camp Cretaceous, but due to scripting and all that, it got changed. However, we are getting, um, like maybe that that's why, don't we have Toro? as like official Camp Cretaceous DLC pack or something? Oh God, anyway. Yes. Uh, but this is the one from Jurassic World Dominion. Um, there is only one other change and that is this, the Iguanodon. The Iguanodon 2022 variant will also be getting 12 new body colors and seven new patterns. We can't wait to see what you do with them. And what's interesting about Iguanodon is that I think it was cut from the movie because not only do we have, um, you know, loads of articles citing Iguanodon as one of the species that was going to appear in Dominion. But Iguanodon also had a toy that was released, uh, showcasing exactly the same skin uh, that we can see there. Maybe a little bit darker. It was definitely maybe. It was definitely maybe. It was definitely going to be part of Jurassic World Dominion in a bigger way than it ever was. Maybe it was seen in some background shots, but hey-ho, here it is in here. So we got given some screenshots showing us what to expect with the maps, I'm assuming. This one is one that has been floating around um, and speculated heavily because of one thing, and that is these little things on the coast. Now, lagoons, lagoons in Jurassic World Evolution 2 were basically these things you just plonk in and then they do whatever, and that's it. However, with this image, it looks like these are viewing vents because not only are we getting new dinosaurs, but we're going to get new aesthetic looks to things, which is really cool. There's probably some things going on here that we can't really see too well because no like HD images have been released of these just yet. Um, but it looks like this could be a lagoon that goes off into the ocean, which is very exciting because the lagoons were just these things that you plonk down, like I said, and that was it. There was no way of a, 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 a dinosaur breaking out. I think they added animations of them banging against the side of the tank. I don't know whether that killed them or whatever, but anyway, they made it feel like it was more, uh, you know, something to worry about. This might be an island that just has a dedicated spot for you to put in your lagoon creatures, and maybe you can't put them in anywhere else. Maybe that's unique to the Malta set, like it doesn't actually have a lagoon that you can make, but you in each island, you get these very cool, unique uh, settings for your creatures, and maybe you can put fences in there. But if it's new, I'm all game for it. It's possible it could just be part of the map because there's no fence uh, that seems to be going here. Or if we're thinking even further, maybe 
mm, just maybe, a bit like how you can place down water, there'll be a new tool that will allow you to just make lagoons. Keep dreaming, buddy. But that's not all, because we actually have this shot that's been released, which shows like an ACU or vet building here and it's just sort of showcasing a little bit more of the aesthetic of the buildings that we're going to see going forward in the Malta area because we're getting a whole we're getting like they said we're getting three new islands we're also getting cosmetics there's probably going to be decorations and all sorts but one thing that's most interesting of course you've got the classic reach 1.5 stars increase trust with your authorities and increase per minute profit which we've already seen but the interesting thing down here is this. Right next to the sabotage, you've got what seems to be a dinosaur claw. And then I'm not too sure what that is, but it's 22 to 9. Maybe this might have something to do with increased trust with your authorities. The fact that it also has a 22 there and has a 22 there. And this is probably what we're going to find out all about that. So we don't need to speculate further. So the new campaign set before the events of Jurassic World Dominion help lead a brand new enterprise in Malta. Work alongside Cabot Finch, of course, and key figures from the film, including Kayla Watts, voiced by DeWanda Wise, Sayona Santos, voiced by Dishin Lackman, and Barry, oh wow, voiced by Omar Sai, wow, okay, and Lewis Dodgson, voiced by Campbell Scott. They've got four voice actors from the actual film. As you set up parks across three new Mediterranean locations, New species will be acquired via the Dinosaur Exchange, where you'll also be able to find eggs and genome data. No expeditions or fossil extractions here. Ooh, interesting. Make your mark and develop a profitable network of parks utilizing brand new Malta buildings and decorations. You'll be required to work with both the underground and authorities. So that's what that is. You've got the 22, which is the green, which is the authorities, and the orange, which I'm assuming is the underground, uh, building trusts with their organizations of via various actions to unlock further opportunities such as hatchery upgrades, locations, and more. Oh, that is interesting. So I'm assuming maybe Cabot Finch will be the good guys, you know, the, the authorities, and then you're Sion Santos and Lewis Dodgson, which are maybe the bad guys. Ooh, very interesting. Progress is persistent across all three locations, including your research. Switch between them on the fly, or even move dinosaurs from one island to the other. Ooh, you know, it'd be really interesting if there are just three islands in the one map. And you can sort of go, oh, that would be so cool. Will they do that though? I'm really not too sure. I feel like Jurassic World Evolution did the islands thing. I just love how we're going back to islands. The whole thing with Dominion is like, we're no longer on the island anymore. Back to islands. Money and scientists will be independent per island. Oh, okay. So yeah, they're probably going to be separate save files. So you'll need to ensure each one is running as well as possible to complete this new campaign scenario. You'll unlock these three locations during campaign mode and will also be able to enjoy each of these islands in sandbox mode as separate maps, as well as the new Malta buildings and decorations. Okay, so it does it does look like they're going to be separate maps, so separate islands, but then in the campaign mode specifically, you may be able to switch between them a lot easier than you would in Sandbox, where you're like, you know, you only get that one. Uh, so that's going to be interesting how they set that up. But not only do we have, you know, the campaign and all this stuff that's coming to the DLC, which will unfortunately be paid for, it won't be free, uh, there is update 5 as well, which, you know, promises even more features. Alongside the new Jurassic World Evolution 2 Dominion Malta expansion, we're also releasing update 5, which is a free update for anyone who owns Jurassic World Evolution 2. Like we said, this update comes with new levels and features, as well as some quality of life updates and bug fixes. It also adds the ability to import saves from PlayStation 4 consoles to PlayStation 5 consoles. Ooh, okay. Not that anyone has a PlayStation 5. <laughs> Let's be honest. <laughs> New challenge levels update 5. Okay, so includes the 5 DFW campaign maps as challenge levels. Oh, so the 5 DFW campaign maps are now going to be challenge levels. Oh, okay. Which will become accessible once you've earned seven stars across all maps in challenge mode. Ooh, interesting. These include Arizona, Breakout, uh, Washington State Wreckage, and Pennsylvania Headquarters, Oregon Avery, and Californian 
photography. So that was interesting. Those are the first ones you ever or I ever got to play. And now you're going to be able to do a challenge road on them. Interesting, because some of them are very small. You'll also be dealing with some brand new challenge conditions, which will vary across levels. I'm assuming this is to do with the DFWs. These range from tranquilizing upgrades, which will require you to research new upgrades to tranquilize or any dinosaur over a level two security rating. Uh, psychological trauma, which will, will require you to hire scientists with the psychologist trait to cure dinosaurs who possess this trait. A dinosaur that have been caught up in cages for so long will need therapy. Interesting. And staff hiring requirements, which will require you to meet certain needs before you're able to hire expert staff members. We're sure you'll be up to the challenge. Okay, so luckily, you know, if you just want to play a game, you don't have to deal with that. But challenges, they give you something extra. That's nice to know. Uh, new tiny dinosaur behaviors. Ooh, this could be interesting. There are brand new behaviors for tiny dinosaurs in Update 5. I'm assuming this is the compi. Uh, this includes group attacks for the Morus Intrepidus and Compsognathus on guests and goats. So... Yeah, they couldn't attack any of those. So now we're going to get new animation. Oh, we have to see that. I wonder if there'll be a, a nod towards the um, the Lost World where they're sort of like, you know, being surrounded and she's holding something. Oh, that'd be interesting. As well as changes to navigation logic. So that Lystrosaurus, Overaptor, Morris Intrepidus, and Compsognathus will navigate around water. Oh, no mention of Dimetrodon. Uh, so Dimetrodon is supposed to drown itself. Okay. <laughs> so they won't run through water. That was always that was always something that was stupid. You had the compi run into the water and it was literally above its head like, I'm dying, <laughs> not floating. Okay, so they, they realize that's a bit silly. Looking forward to seeing those. These are going to be things that are like the silent changes that you might not notice unless you know about them. Of course, we've also got some quality of life updates coming your way in update five. These include two vehicles honking at dinosaurs blocking their way. Oh, okay. So that was in Jurassic Park Operation Genesis, but all right, as well as ensuring sleeping dinosaurs are reactive when being honked at. Again, something that was in Jurassic Park Operation Genesis released like, God, how long ago? Like 20 years? God knows. And territory decaying more slowly near desirable feeders that are inside the territory. Alongside this, the Kendra Saw 2015 and Orana Saw 2015 variants, both from the Camp Cretaceous dinosaur pack. Oh, so they just adding those in as well as the Camp Cretaceous. Was there a Camp Cretaceous DLC? Maybe. God, I'm just forgetting now. As well as the 2022 variants for Dreadnoughtus and Giganotosaurus from the Dominion Biosyn expansion will each be getting 12 new body colors and seven new pattern color options. And you'll now be able to view a body variant selected in the genome editor and species viewer. <laughs> Oh my god, yes, thank you, jeez. So the, one of the problems with the genome or making your dinosaurs was that yes, it showed you what the pattern was, but it might look completely different on the dinosaur. But now you're actually gonna see it before you make the dinosaurs. Oh my god, that, that is the best thing there. The fact that like the, the Giga and the Dreadnoughtus are gonna get their own patterns because the Giga Notosaurus had that one skin that changed it to the one from Dominion, but they know that's really popular. So not only are you gonna be able to, of course, make that like you used to, but you're gonna get the variant and the pattern for it as well, which is great. So you're gonna make loads of variants of that model. Um, there are more quality of life changes as well as bug fixes in the full patch notes coming out in the 8th of December, but these will probably be the ones they'll focus on more. So there you have it. We have, oh my God, we have so much coming. So for me, I thought we were just going to get, you know, maybe the um, multi-pack, you know, we'll get the Atrociraptor, maybe the dinosaurs, and that would be it. But the fact we're getting, you know, a campaign voiced by new characters, maps, skins, decorations, building like variants, as well as updates to just so much stuff, as well as, as, well as the unsung hero there, which is, of course, being able to see what your dinosaur is going to look like before you make it, which is great. God, don't know why what that wasn't in the game to start with. Anyway, anyway, uh, that is going to have to wrap this video. Hopefully I've covered everything um, to expect in the update until it you know, eventually does come out and then we get to see what it is. But if you've enjoyed this video, guys, leave a like and until next time, I'll see you cuties later. Oh, bye bye